Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Beliefs of Islam with me, Hassan Hadi. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the existence of God from the perspective of the ontological argument. Another argument for the existence of God, which is particularly popular among its philosophers and theologians, which is sadly somewhat restricted in its popularity due to requiring a rigorous background in philosophy and minimally logic, is known as the ontological argument for the existence of God. The argument, like most other theistic arguments, has a long history of usage in Muslim, Christian and even deist circles for establishing the existence of a deity, but it particularly has become revised and more popular in 20th century Western philosophy circles where it's recognized among its, its proponents that the arguments are philosophically airtight and sound. Now arguably, due to the elitism of the argument, it has not become overly popular in popular layperson circles due to the necessary preliminary philosophical training required to demonstrate the premises of the argument are actually considered sound and valid. Nevertheless, due to the excellence of the argument, even if it's the case that such is lost to many viewers, and the popularity in scholarly circles, it would be an injustice to not cover such crucial philosophical proof. Now the argument admittedly has certain primitive forms found in philosophers such as Augustine, but came to take on its more completed form under Anselm, a European Christian theologian. Now the form which we will present is possibly the most sophisticated and rationally sound formulation crafted by the philosopher Alvin Plantinga. It gives us follows. Now we are going to consider a list of premises in order to better illuminate the ontological argument. Now premise 1. It's possible that a maximally great being exists. Premise 2. If it's possible that a maximally great being exists, then a maximally great being exists in some possible world. Premise 3. If a maximally great being exists in some possible world, then it exists in every possible world. Premise 4. If a maximally great being exists in the actual world, then a maximally great being exists. Therefore, a maximally great being exists. Now, premises 2 and 5 of this argument are relatively uncontroversial. Most philosophers would agree that if God's existence is even possible, then he must exist. The principal issue to be settled with respect to Plantinga's ontological argument is what warrant exists for thinking the key premise it's possible that a maximally great being exists to be true. The idea of a maximally great being is intuitively a coherent idea, and so it seems plausible that such a being could exist. In order for the ontological argument to fail, the concept of a maximally great being must be incoherent, like the concept of a married bachelor or a square circle. But the concept of a maximally great being doesn't seem even remotely incoherent. This provides some good warrant for thinking that it's possible that a maximally great being exists. This is for today and until we meet next episode. Thank you very much indeed. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.